few months ago, I was constantly under attack from hackers and cyber criminals, and then I made a few changes in Entra ID, and all of my identities were now safe and secure. And in this video, I'm gonna show you what that change was and how to use it, and all you need is a phone. In the Entra ID Admin Center on the left, check out the Protection section. Then go to your Identity Secure Score. Now in a brand new tenant, you'll have several recommendations here to help keep the hackers out. And as you do, your score will go up. Mine's right now at 34%, which is not great. But you have the key to getting a better score in your pocket right now. And I like to sort these improvement actions by user impact and then deal with the big stuff first like getting all of my users on multi-factor authentication and using risk policies and self-service password reset, but that's not all. This link to Security Center looks at things from the way your identities impact your Azure subscriptions. And the two things that we really need to fix are with cloud owners. They should have MFA enabled and guests should not be owners. Now, stopping the attacks and hackers and improving your secure score starts with authentication methods. These are all of the supported ways to secure your sign-ins using multi-factor authentication. Now, MFA goes beyond just usernames and passwords, which could easily be stolen or even guessed by hackers. And you'll need a second proof that you are really you, which we can easily do by something that belongs to you, like your phone. Your phone needs to use a face ID or even a fingerprint sensor to authenticate that second factor and make the whole thing work. And it's the Microsoft Authenticator that goes on your phone and makes all that magic happen. First thing we need to do is enable the feature. Then you select your target group. And we know from our identity score that MFA should be enabled for all users, but not so fast. Turning this on is a great idea for security, but turning it on for everyone is a terrible idea. If something goes wrong with Entra ID or the MFA service, everybody would be locked out of the cloud. So what do we do? Well, over in the identity section, I created a cloud only user called Backdoor. This is also known as a break glass account. It has the role here of global administrator, but I don't have any kind of protection on it. No MFA, no access rules, no privilege identity management, just a very long, complex password that I update very frequently. So if anything goes wrong with the rest of the cloud services, I can still get in, make some changes to policies, and everyone can get back to work until the service is fixed, and then we put it all back. And because our MFA policy only deals with groups, I also created a group called Break Glass and then I made my backdoor user a member of it. So back here in the authentication methods, just click to add and exclude group, then select your break glass group. Now before you click save here, check out the configure tab. This adds some more layers to MFA, like using a one-time password. And also you can show the name of the app that's asking for authentication, like virtual desktop. You can also show where the sign-in is coming from in the world through a map. And just don't forget to click save when you're done. Now, after you set up all the MFA methods you want, set up a registration campaign. Click over here to edit and then enable. Now set the number of days you will allow your users to keep signing in insecurely, which for me is gonna be zero. Then don't forget to add the break glass exclusion group, then click save. So we have MFA, which is great, and but while we're here, let's also check out your password protection. Now you should have a lockout threshold and a duration, and also if there are some specific passwords you wanna ban, maybe because they're too well known in your environment, you can list those here as well. And depending on the environment you're in, you could enable this password protection to extend on-prem. So now that you have some password protection and MFA, we're ready to log in. And if videos like this are a help to you, let me know by clicking that thumbs up and consider subscribing to the Azure Academy because there is a lot more to come in this interest series as well as a lot of other cool stuff in the cloud. Now back in the identity section, we're gonna look at company branding. And this is where we'll change the look and feel of our sign-ins starting with the default sign-in experience. Now you can set your different icons, logos, and background images. So when your user signs in, they know they're in the right place. Now on the layout tab, I prefer a full screen background 
and I also like to see my company header which you set on the next tab. Now over on the sign in form you can also set up a banner and how your company logo appears in light or dark themes along with a username hint and also some sign in text. And there's even a section here at the bottom for self service password reset which was another one of our identity score suggestions and I'll show you more about that in a minute. Then save everything. Now when you go to sign in and you'll start off with the bland default screens. When you put in your username something happens in the background called home realm discovery and that's going to look at your domain name which is connected to your entra ID tenant and it pulls all the settings in that we just made and it looks pretty good if I do say so myself. Then you just put in your password and click sign in. Now because we have a campaign going your users will be prompted to set up MFA and they'll get this screen to download the Microsoft Authenticator and then click next. Now once it's installed on their phones you want to click plus in the top corner then click next on the portal and that'll generate a QR code. Now on your phone select your work or school account and then scan the QR code. Then just enter the number on the screen and tap yes and your MFA is now set up for your user. When the sign in completes your browser will finish doing its thing and your users can get to work. Now back in Entra ID you can look at that user registration detail and see who has everything set up but we aren't quite done. Now you've got a good password policy and MFA is ready to roll but to really increase your security we need to think about risks. Click over on identity protection and there are three protection policies that will keep the hackers from even getting close to your cloud. Starting with MFA registration. Now the campaign is great but it's the policy that enforces things. And this again should be set up for all users and your break glass group should be excluded and the policy enforcement should be enabled at the bottom. Then take a look at user risk policy. Now there's a lot of data points that go into how risky a sign in is. For example if you always sign in from the UK and you're on a corporate joined device but now you're signing in from North Korea from an unjoined device. In those cases I just want Entra to block access completely. So even if those hackers knew my password and they stole my phone they still can't get in. And you could top it off by forcing a password change. And all of that's different than sign in risk policies. And this is really to give you an extra layer of comfort. And you can set this up for all levels of sign in and to enforce MFA. And that's pretty good if you just need the basics but to really kick things up you want to look at conditional access. Now this is a huge topic that I've done a few videos on already so I'll keep it simple here. Create a policy from a template and then select over here to require MFA for all users. Then click next, turn the policy state to on and click create. Now check out your new policy and open it up. In the users section just like before we want this to run for all users but then go to exclude. And you want to add again your break glass group. But notice this policy automatically added the user you were signed in as. And that will keep you from locking out your own account until you've had a chance to test everything. And after you know the policy performs the way that you expect be sure that you go in and remove your user later. Now this policy is going to be enforced on all cloud applications which will include the Azure portal which is why we want your user to be excluded for the moment. Then scroll down and look at the access controls and you'll be granted access to sign in if you supply your MFA. And of course that's just the basics on conditional access you can certainly add more policies or known locations and really spice things up. So the last thing we're going to look at today to improve our secure score is password resets. Now for this one I like to use it on a select group rather than all users. So I've created a dynamic group called self password reset and I put all my non admins in there. Next are the authentication methods and I like two and one of them should be your users phone and I want them to set up five questions and then they have to give the right answer to three of them before they can do the reset. Which reminds me we should go to the registration section and enable that and set the time frame for the users to have to reconfirm all their details. And this not only works on your cloud only users but also on synced users through connect sync and cloud sync so all of your passwords in the cloud stay in sync with what's on prem. As for our next video I've got a few things in mind but I want to hear from you 
Maybe it's global secure access or verifiable credentials, or maybe something else entirely. Whatever it is, you'll find it right over here. And happy learning.